What is up everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC Vegas 46. We have Calvin Cater going against Giga Chikadze, a 10 fight card, a card that has completely changed from when I started taping in late December. We now have 10 fights, lots of fights have you know changed opponents, but I still feel like this card's going to be good. And on top of that, um, I really don't care who's fighting. I just want some fights at this point, and I know a lot of you guys are feeling the same way. Uh, before we get started and get into the video, as always, if you guys can please leave a like on the video, subscribe here to DFS by the numbers, hit the post bell notification as well, so you are notified when I do go live on Friday and Saturday and also Monday. And uh, by the way, tune in to Best Bet on Saturday, one hour prior to the prelims. The prelims starting at 5, I'll be going live at 4 with Uncle Weezy Narco Cop and uh, a newcomer in Eric Betts fight should be a very fun show um, and yeah other than that if you guys have not heard yet I did release my website um, to sign up you go to the join now and with that there's going to be three options and it's just like the patreon same prices all the good stuff it's just a lot easier access um, for the person that's getting it or for me as well it just makes everything a lot easier uh, the most popular option has been that MMA DFS and betting but MMA betting as well with that you get the access to the statistical model first notice on all bets the betting article the betting breakdown videos the Hail Mary parlay access to discord and this is new the full card breakdown and best bet article which is out on on Wednesdays there um, if you want to sign up that's great ten dollars a month if not and if you do want my bets for free this is going to be new for this new year what you're going to go to is you're going to go down to news and you're going to go down to subscribe for the latest news and tips. Um, put your name, email, sign up, and then I will be putting my bets on there for free. I'll be sending them out on fight day. Just makes everything a lot easier. The press of a button, I'm able to send out um, the picture I usually do of, of the bet MMA tips with all my bets on it. So if you do want those and you're wondering where my bets are, well, I'm going to be talking about them on Fridays and Saturdays, but if you do want them to see them, um, sign up there and I'll be sending them out on fight day. So that is about it. I say we get into the video now and let us start with the very first fight of the night. We have um, Brian Kelleher going against Kevin Kroom. And this order is a little messed up. They've been changing it on me all week, but uh, that's what we're going to go with here. We have Kevin Kroom, Brian Kelleher, and I was... I was kind of shocked to see the opener for the, the fight doesn't go to decision in the under 2.5. The under 2.5 opened up at minus 115. I went to go bet it. It was not there anymore. I was able to get minus 125, and I do have 1.25 units on it. I was kind of expecting that to be like minus 200. The reason being is Kevin Kroom, 76% finish rate. Brian Kelleher, 78% finish rate. So both guys are very good finishers. On top of that, these guys are getting finished a lot. Kevin Kroom has been finished eight times in his career, four by knockout, four by submission. Brian Keller has been finished seven times. So I think Kroom is kind of live early. The problem with Kroom is he does slow down a lot as the fight goes on. We saw especially in his last fight against Caceres, this dude was gassed out within like the first couple minutes of the fight. And this is a fight where he's taken the fight on very short notice. So I think if Kroom does not get Keller out of there early, which again is possible, I think Keller is going to finish him in that late first or uh, early second round. So I really like the under two and a half rounds. I really like the fight doesn't go decision. I really like Keller inside the distance at plus Monday, one point one plus 125. But my official bet for that is going to be the under two and a half rounds, minus 125, 1.25 units on that. Uh, we have Borshev going against Dakota Bush. Um, yeah, no bet on this one. I see a lot of people taking the dog shot on Bush. I honestly don't hate it. This fight does seem like it should be lying closer towards a pick because you have Borshev, you know, who's a very good striker on the feet. He's going to have a massive advantage. And you have Bush, who's a, a really solid grappler. And if he can get this fight down to the map, maybe he can get a submission here. Um, the problem that stuck out to me the most was Bush by submission. I saw it plus 600 on Fanduel. That kind of sticks out. Because um, Bush, when he does win, it's usually inside the distance, and it's usually in round one. So maybe like Bush by submission or Bush round one is interesting, but even like the under kind of stuck out to me. And the under in the fight doesn't go is a very popular play this week, and I can see why, because on the feet, it's going to be Borsche of all day. On the mat, it's going to be Bush. And I get it. Um, I just don't know if I want to lay minus 175 on two guys that have never been finished. You know, Bush has shown some very good durability, very tough guy. But with that said, he's never fought a Borshev. So we'll see what happens. I'm personally picking Borshev, but I'm not laying the minus 180 because Bush, he has a clear path to victory, and that is getting the fight down to the map. But give me Borshev for the win. No bet here for me. All right. Next, we have Charles Rosa going against TJ Brown. I actually do have a bet on this fight. I didn't think I would, but, man, uh, Charles Rosa is getting disrespected. Uh, I feel like TJ Brown should not be minus 300, minus 250 against really anybody at this point of his career because... We have seen him pull stunts 
And we have seen him pull stunts more than once in the UFC, and he's only had three fights. He went out there against Jordan Griffin, looked great, took down Jordan Griffin seven times, and then the dude gets submitted while he's in side control. He slows down, gets submitted in that second round. That's not good. Against Danny Chavez, he completely abandons the, the wrestling game, which that's what he is. He's a really good wrestler, grappler, black belt. Um, he completely abandons it, and he gets outstruck against Chavez. He finally starts shooting takedowns, cannot get him. His legs are already beat up by then. And then it's Chavez that takes him down four times. So I really question the fight IQ of TJ Brown, like a lot. Um, and I get why he's the favorite. There's a clear path to victory for Brown. I'm picking Brown to win. The, the clear path to victory is taking down Charles Rosa, exploiting that like 40% takedown defense. We know how to beat Charles Rosa. The game plan has been written on the wall by multiple opponents, Derek Minner, Bryce Mitchell, even Justin Janes. Um, you take this guy down, you lay on him, he's going to lay on his back and hunt for submissions. If he submits you, yeah, he wins. If not, he's going to lose a decision. A prop that really stuck out to me is Charles Rosa by submission. Um, and I, I really can't believe this line because TJ Brown... Again, he got submitted while he was in side control. And on top of that, he's been submitted three times in his career. And you got to think, if Charles Rose is going to win, he's not going to knock out T.J. Brown. He's not going to win a decision against T.J. Brown. If Charles Rosa wins, you got to think it's probably by submission. Charles Rosa is a legit black belt in BJJ. That's his path to victory. Now, why is, is Charles Rosa by submission plus 800, plus 850? I'm not really sure why, but I don't mind taking a small stab on that. And that's what I did. I have a quarter unit on Charles Rosa to win by submission at plus 850. So um, I am picking T.J. Brown to win and, and T.J. Brown to win by decision, but Rosa's live to catch him in something for sure. So we'll see what happens there. But yeah, that, pl that plus 850 really stuck out to me. Uh, Ramiz Brahimaj going against Court McGee. I do have a bet on this fight as well. I have decision only, Court McGee minus 150. So these are something I'm going to be taking advantage of You know, this year. Um, especially I started doing it a lot late last year, and I, I like these bets a lot. So decision only means if this fight ends inside the distance, the bet pushes. Whether it's Brahimaj getting a finish or McGee getting a finish, the bet pushes, you get your money back. If Brahimaj wins a decision, um, the bet loses, and if McGee wins a decision, the bet wins. I thought that line was really off because you take a look at Brahimaj. This is a guy that when he wins, it's inside the distance. A 100% finish rate, all of those wins but one coming in that first round. This is a guy in Brahimaj who is 1-3 in, in fights that do go past the first round. And you can see why this guy slows down a ton after that first round. Um, his cardio is not great at all, um, especially in fights where he's wrestling. If he's going out there and wrestling and he does not get the finish, I have not liked at all what I've seen in rounds 2 and rounds 3. The volume's not there. Um, the power is there, but the power kind of drops off a cliff a little bit after that first round. So could... Brahimaj submit McGee early? Yeah, potentially. Brahimaj is a beast. He's a, he's a beast. Absolutely. Could happen. Um, but if not, I think that, you know, Court McGee is going to be able to take over wins round, win rounds two and rounds three. So I do like that decision only bet. Um, if there's a finish, that's fine. If if Brahimaj wins his first decision ever, I mean, that's fine. I'll, I'll take my L, but I, I want to take advantage of that line because I really do believe it's off. Um, but yeah, give me Court McGee here to win. Uh, Court McGee by decision was like plus 200 on FanDuel. I don't know if it's still there, but that would be a good look. But yeah, if you have access to that decision only, um, Court McGee minus 150. Brahimaj, even like the finish only Brahimaj could be something to look at. I think it was like minus 180. Like even that's not terrible because I'd be really surprised if Court McGee did finish the fight. But yeah, those are just some things I want to look at more in 2022. Those finish only, those decision only props because um, a lot of them do stick out. Next fight, Joseph Holmes, Jamie Pickett. Not much to say here uh, besides I think the line's really off. Uh, Joseph Holmes does not bring a lot to the table. He's a very big guy for the division, 6'4", 80-inch reach, um, very low volume. He's not fought anybody at all. His, his, his toughest opponent was Jonathan Patty. At least with Jamie Pickett, we know he's fought the better competition, but I'll be honest, I really don't want to bet Jamie Pickett, um, especially now he's plus 120. It was plus 135 a couple days ago. I guess that would have been the move, but I'm going to pick Pickett to win. Um, absolutely not betting this fight. I want to stay far, far away from it. If you got in on the over one and a half early, I saw it like minus 170 on Bovada earlier in the week. I was tempted on that pass. It's now like minus 210. So if you got in on the er early on the over one and a half, I don't hate that. But this is a fight I really don't want to put any money on. But I'm going to take Pickett for the upset. But I really don't want to bet on Jamie Pickett, to be honest. Uh, Joe Anderson, Brito going against Bill Algio. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I like Brito to win. There are some things that I am concerned about. Um, you know, Algio has horrible takedown defense, but his get-up game is absolutely elite. Uh, my concern is in some fights, Brito's cardio looks really good, but in some fights, his cardio looks really bad, and I do feel like Algio is really going to make Brito work here. Um, I do think Brito's going to win the fight. I do think he probably wins by decision, uh, but no bet here for me. Um, a lot of people were talking about on my live stream, like the Algio third-round prop could be something to look at. Could be, um, but I, I say Brito wins. I think he's going to have the bigger moments on the feet. But if this fight does get extended, which I do think it does, I think that third round could be sketchy because, uh, again, Algio is going to make Brito work. If he gets taken down, he's going to stand back up. And we know how um, exhausting offensive wrestling is, especially for a guy that like, like Brito especially. So I'm going to take Brito to win by decision. Not a ton of confidence in it. Speaking of not a ton of confidence, Jake Collier, Chase Sherman, I have a, a quarter unit bet on Chase Sherman at plus 310 by knockout. Uh, the reason being is 93% finish rate for Chase Sherman, 93% by knockout. He's finished all but one of his wins but by knockout. I kind of see this as a pick em fight. So why are we getting plus 310 on Sherman by KO against Collier? Who I, I really do question Collier's durability. Collier has been finished three times, one at, not by, uh, one at heavyweight and then also... Um, he's been finished, I think, middleweight twice as well. So, yeah, if, if Sherman wins, it's by knockout. If Collier wins, it's by decision. Collier by decision, plus 140. is probably going to be a popular play this week. I get it. I do actually agree with the line. I think Collier should be favored because I think he's going to be winning minutes of this fight. It's just I feel like Sherman personally knocks him out, and I'll take a, a quarter unit shot on Sherman by knockout, plus 310. I don't want to get too invested because it's, uh, it's Chase Sherman, but give me Sherman by KO, plus 310, quarter unit. Um, taking a small shot there. Brandon Royval, Rogerio Bontarin. I have a bet here as well. I have Royval inside the distance, plus 105, half a unit on it. I didn't go with the money line because there, there's a lot of things I like about Royval, but there's also a lot of things I don't like. The things I like is the cardio, the pace. I think it's huge, especially in this fight. The striking, how dangerous he is, the volume, um, the length, the reach. Um, I like all those things about Royval. The things that I don't like is he's very hittable. About a 55% uh, striking defense. Bonterin has like a, like a, I think it's like, no, actually it's like a 45% striking defense. But with that said, Bonterin has like a 43% striking defense. So it's better than Bonterin's, but still, I don't like to see that. And on top of that, a very poor takedown defense as well. But what I like about Roy Val is he's going to make his opponents work uh, nonstop. If Bonterin does take down Roy Val, Roy Val is going to be throwing up submissions nonstop. He's going to be looking for reversals and sweeps. And I just don't know if Bonterin's cardio is going to hold. Um, so I like Roy Val. I like him inside the distance. Plus 105, half a unit. I think Roy Val finishes the fight. Roy Val is a 92% finish rate, finishing all but one of his wins by uh, finish. He's the only one one decision. So I think he finishes Bonterin here, rounds two or rounds three. I don't think Bonterin is going to be able to keep up with this pace. Uh, Caitlin Chukagan, Jennifer Maya. I have half a unit on Chukagan by decision. Um, minus 110. I don't want to play the money line minus 180, minus 190 in some places. Now, I think it's going to be a, a lot closer than the minus 190 indicates, but I do like this fight for her. I think it's going to look a lot like the first fight. Jennifer Maya, for some reason, I'll, I'll never know why, she's not going to shoot for takedowns. Um, if she did, Jennifer Maya could absolutely win this fight. The problem is she doesn't. Only four takedown attempts in seven fights. Only has two takedowns in seven fights. Um, so you really can't count on Maya to do that. If she's going to strike with Jukagan, Jukagan's the much bigger fighter, the much better striker, more volume, the much better striking defense. You know, Jukagan's going to win a 15-minute a fight that does probably play on the feet for the most part, and it's going to be a pretty pretty easy decision for Jukagan. But if Jennifer Maya does want to fight smart for the very first time in her career, she could absolutely win. Um, so, yeah, the, the Caitlin Jukagan decision prop stuck out to the most. I got it at minus 110. I see on some books it's minus 130. Um, I see a minus 120 and a minus 150 even for Chukagan by decision. I think that's you know better than the money line. No finishes in the UFC. And then uh, if you do like Maya, Maya by decision is like plus 200. I don't hate that as well. So we'll see what happens. Caitlin Chukagan, half a unit by decision, minus 110. And then my biggest bet of the night is going to be the fight starts round three for Giga Chikadze, Calvin Cater. Got it at minus 176. I have two units on that. Um, I think this fight starts round three. I think it does get extended. Calvin Cater is very, very durable, very tough. One of the toughest guys in the division. He's absorbed, you know, nearly a thousand strikes, um, and he's not been knocked down. This guy has never been knocked out in his entire career, and neither has Giga Chikadze. And they have a combined, I want to say, like forty something fights. So 
Both these guys are very tough. Both these guys are very durable. I think this does get extended. I do like Iga to win the fight. I think he's going to win at least those three rounds, at least. Uh, I do think it'll get sketchy if it hits round four, rounds five, because we have seen Giga Chikadze slow down multiple times in multiple third rounds. But I do think he shirt up that cardio quite a bit. And again, I think he can win at least those first three. Rounds four and rounds five could definitely get interesting. But give me Giga to win. Giga by decision plus 250. I don't really want to touch that, but give me the, the over two and a half, I think, is great. Um, and then I think the, the fight starts round three. I like that a lot. So give me some non-violence. Usually I'm hunting for violence, but I want this fight to go get extended. I, I do want to see Giga in the fourth round, in the fifth round. I want him to prove me wrong because I think it'll get sketchy late. But, you know, maybe he looks good. So we'll see what happens. But give me the fight starts round three. Two units minus 176. So going to recap the bets. We have fight starts round three. Giga Chikadze, uh, Calvin Cater, minus 176, two units. Court McGee, Ramiz Brahimaj. McGee decision only, uh, minus 150, 1.5 units. That means, again, if there's a finish, either side, the bet pushes, you get your money back. If Brahimaj wins his first decision ever, you lose the bet. And then if uh, McGee wins by decision, you win the bet. Uh, Chukagan by decision, half a unit, minus 110. Roy Val inside the distance, half a unit, plus 105. Sherman by KO, quarter unit, plus 310. Rosa by submission, quarter unit, plus 850. And then Kelleher, Kroom, under two and a half rounds, 1.25 units minus 125 and yeah that is about it be sure to check out the website like i said if you do want to sign up that's great lots of stuff going on there all the content is posted for there if you don't want to sign up if you don't want to pay the 10 bucks that's fine as well um just put your name put your email and then i'll be sending out the betting card on on fight day so we'll see what happens there but yeah, i really do appreciate everybody that signed up thus far um really been you know blown away I thought it would kind of be like a slow grind trying to get people on here. But no, I mean, really do appreciate everybody signing up. Um, and yeah, very excited to see what this uh, this new year brings. So that's about it, guys. Please leave a like on your way out. Subscribe to the channel. It's much, much appreciated as always. And good luck for UFC Vegas 46. Let us make some money. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Instagram, DFS by the numbers. I'll be posting, you know, bets occasionally on Instagram. I posted the Court McGee one there, I think on like Tuesday or Wednesday. And I'll just be doing that, you know, all year. Just multiple bets on there as well. And I'll be, like, live tweeting throughout the event, I'm sure, on Twitter. If you guys have any questions, my DMs are always open, all that good stuff. So that's about it, guys. Good luck. Let's make some money. And uh, see you guys later.